Um, hi everybody, I'm Daza Greenwood, and um, I should probably introduce myself as initially a co-organizer of Massachusetts Legal Hackers, and then subsequently when we combined Massachusetts Legal Hackers and Boston Cambridge Legal Hackers and another, another legal hacking group, um, co-organizer of Boston Legal Hackers. And then when I lived in New York, after volunteering for a while, co-organizer of New York Legal Hackers. I think I'm still on the page, so you have to get rid of me there. And um, now I've moved back to my hometown of Oakland, where you can find me as a co-organizer of San Francisco Legal Hackers. <laughs> Thank you very much. Legal Hacker. <laughs> and oh, how I love legal hacking. Um, and so this is what we're looking at right now is a blog post um, on my blog, which is civics.com. Um, and you can go there and find the post called Algorithmic Entity Accountability. And why am I showing you a blog post for this flash talk? It's because um, sort of like opening the curtains uh, to a interesting little legal hack that I've been um, contemplating lately and that um, soon I'm going to try to tackle. And so I'd like to describe it to you and then see if anyone has any interesting ideas or questions because I have not pulled the trigger yet. So the, the background on this is that uh, the state of Wyoming has recently enacted a new statute that allows for um, decentralized autonomous organizations to become um, legal entities, LLC specifically. And um, I was um, honored to help a little bit on that statute. And, uh, and one of the most remarkable aspects of it is that in forming that legal entity, um, organizers uh, can, w in the operating um, agreement, have to indicate uh, the extent to which the entity shall be algorithmically managed. And that seemed really cool to everybody when, when it was going through the legislature. And then I started thinking, well, hold on a minute. Uh, the extent to which it shall be algorithmic, that one extent an entity could be algorithmically managed is 100%. It could be 100% algorithmically managed. And that was completely consistent with what some of the advocates of the legislation wanted. They wanted a completely autonomous organization that was a legal entity, that was an LLC. And that's enticing and interesting. However, it started making me wonder if this is really such a great idea uh, because our algorithms up to the task of managing a legal entity and when you think of and when it was discussed before the select committee that devised the legislation um, the context was sort of smart contracts that were doing you know basically like investment funds like a classic DAO um, not an investment fund technically in the financial services sense but you know what I mean you pull your cryptocurrency you invest it in projects hopefully you make a profit however an LLC in Wyoming and in any state could do business in any way. It doesn't have to be <laughs> like on the on a blockchain. Uh, and in fact, it doesn't have to be that form of an organization. You know, it could run a uh, kindergarten or a dynamite factory or whatever, a hardware store. It could do just anything. And so that got me thinking, well, what are the, what's the nature of my misgivings about a 100% algorithm? And it really, so what I looked at, what I did on the legal side of legal hacking was I just started searching through the rest of Wyoming statutes to see what are the requirements for managers of LLCs in Wyoming. Turns out they were similar to Massachusetts LLCs in much of the U.S. Uh, one of the requirements is that, um, okay, well, I'm, I'm sorry, I shouldn't be just scrolling through a blog post, I'll just tell you, uh, is that, <laughs> that they have fiduciary duties of care and loyalty to the other members of the LLC and to the entity itself. And I thought, oh, good. Now, this is something I can get my mind around where it's something I associate really with what I would call human-level intelligence, human-level cognition and judgment. Um, and one of the big things in AI, which is, I'd say, very closely adjacent to using autonomous technologies on blockchain for organizations, is um, this quest we've had for decades now for general-level intelligence. 
Um, and it occurred to me, this is an interesting way to describe some of the gap between what we can get now with even very like complex smart contracts and complex modern AI, like large language models, for example, and what we would expect from a human. So I started thinking, you know, maybe what we ought to do is shine some further light on this. Partly some of the legislator, legislators are asking me, well, why not just give this a try? We're a pro-innovation state. Um, like, what would, why not let people experiment with completely algorithmically run legal entities? And so uh, what I'm planning to say during the next hearings, which are in just under a month now, when they're looking at amending the statute further, is um, maybe what is, is, is to ask the question, well, how could we test, how could we assess and evaluate and measure the extent to which a, the, a, 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 such an algorithm could correctly comprehend and apply the relevant fiduciary duties? It occurred to me one way I know how to test it is with a standardized test. In the legal context, it's the MPRE specifically. Um, and if, if you're a financial advisor um, and a fiduciary rule applies, there's standardized tests for the same duties. There are standardized, well-calibrated, like longitudinally tested exam instruments. Um, and so I thought, okay, well, let me get ahead of this a little bit. And I talked to some friends at OpenAI. They run GPT-3 and DALI and some other things at, in order to get a research API access to um, GPT-3, which is a natural language um, model. And it's possible, I'm still figuring out how, which is partly why I wanted to expose this to everyone, see if anyone had ideas, Jack or others. Um, but I think I can create a test harness um, and basically apply just the duty of loyalty and care question set um, to, th through the API and see if, it's, if it can well, this is where it gets complicated. You can't do a multiple choice test in the API. There's no such like get or post for that. But you, I think I could arrange it in such a way to see if it could auto complete the right way or if it can basically get the difference, if it can start to distinguish answers that would demonstrate that it is selecting the scenarios and facts that would reflect um, for example, a manager that is not putting the, their own interests or someone else's interests ahead of the interests of the members or the entity itself. And so I've been slowly, oh, and the other thing I noticed when I was researching this is there's actually a bunch of people, or there's a number of people that have started to apply IQ tests to AI. And I thought, oh, I got a, a, some good ideas for how they created test harnesses to apply, the, to apply different types of IQ tests to different different models. Um, and so I think it's, it might be possible to cobble together a way, in summary, to apply a, um, to apply a test to, a, to um, AI specifically to see uh, whether or the extent to which it is capable of, of um, demonstrating um, answers that would be considered passing grades, shall we say, for, the MP, for the, something like the MPRE, or at least that subset of it. I think my assumption is that when I do this, what we'll see is it doesn't pass the grade, and that's okay, because I think some of the idea here is to ask the question, um, where's the gap? What is to be engineered next? What would be minimally sufficient to rely more and more on this beneficial technology for business and financial purposes, um, and it's something that we can build toward? Anyhow, um, so that's the hack, and I, I, I talked to my colleagues at MIT, where I also have a post um, about um, exploring this there. They thought it was a great idea, um, and so over this fall and spring semester of uh, this academic year, I'm going to do some kind of research project that will be an open legal hacking project in collaboration with our friends in Boston Legal Hackers, and San Francisco Legal Hackers. Um, to explore this, and that means you, my dear fellow legal hackers, are all invited to this jolly romp. And uh, if you have any ideas, I hope you will contact me. I hope that you'll talk to me at lunch and um, see if we can find a way that's legit and where we can really learn something from trying this um, interesting test. Thank you very much.
I ran the clock. You are allowed to ask How do we participate? How do we participate in January? Can we do it remotely? And what tools are you using for uh, to allow us to do that? I hereby promise that there will be some kind of way that you can participate remotely. And so it, how that's going to happen exactly, I don't know. But it will ultimately be available at law.mit.edu. And until we figure out how that's going to work, if you go to civics.com to this blog post, I know I can at least update this blog post with a link to how you can participate. The best way to participate is just like grab me. I'm at that table right there, and I'll be at lunch, and I'll be at dinner, and let's just talk about it, and you can participate. Please participate. Hi, uh, thank you, uh, members of the committee. I'm Daza Greenwood, and I'm here in my MIT capacity today. Um, to, um, if, if it's in scope, and I should ask this of the, of the uh, chair first, uh, it's basically to provide a quick, uh, to let you know about some research that we're starting this semester on the Dow LLC statute that follows up on the algorithmic manager um, part of the statute. Uh, it'll be short, but I don't know that it's necessarily in scope for the identifier topic. No, this is a good time for that, Daza. Thanks. Thank you. Um, so very quickly, um, we are launching a research project at law.mit.edu this year, uh, this semester actually, on the Dow, the Wyoming Dow LLC project, and particularly is to explore some of the issues and the options with the Dow LLC um, algorithmic manager part of the statute. Um, and uh, it's especially in the context where some activities under this legal entity uh, will be happening off chain, not completely under a smart contract. Um, and, you know, that'll be happening in commerce or other parts of the economy. So specifically, we're going to be looking to test the capacity of um, uh, some example Dow LLC algorithms to correctly perform fiduciary duties that are owed by managers of Wyoming LLCs to other members and to the entity itself under uh, section 17-29-409 um, of the Wyoming statutes covering standards of conduct for members and managers. Um, and uh, the idea that we had was to take the standardized tests that lawyers, for example, have to take for to, to, to show competence to understand and correctly apply the fiduciary duties of care and loyalty, which are the two that the Wyoming statutes require of LLC managers. Um, it's known as the MPRE, uh, the Multi-State Professional Responsibility Exam, and possibly also the fiduciary rule exams uh, that financial advisors um, are required to take. And basically, uh, we've got an idea to create a test harness to, to see um, how good or not good a job um, some of these algorithms are able to do um, on these tests and uh, hopefully learn from it uh, and see, um, well, just basically see what we see. Uh, what we expect is that there may be a gap between what um, some of these algorithms are able to do and what we would expect of a human manager of an LLC and that maybe there'll be some learning from that uh, that could help be an input to the committee in further amendments down the line for the statute, perhaps um, ensuring more human control for the types of activities that would require uh, typically fiduciary duties or maybe limiting the scope of activities such an entity could do or, um, or something else, or maybe just kind of going for it uh, in view of the fact that it's a uh, new innovation that you want to encourage. But anyway, we'd at least like to start to clarify what these things can and can't do um, as against the criteria expected of humans for similar LLCs on, in Wyoming under Wyoming law. And that's uh, that's what we're doing. Uh, we hope that it will be helpful to you. And if you have any questions, well, I should say, if you want to see the research, it's actually on a blog post now at civics.com. And if you click on the blog and scroll down, there's an algorithmic entity and fiduciary duties post. And soon in a week or two, we'll have a research page at law.mit.edu as well. We'd welcome any feedback, uh, questions or concerns the committee may have on this. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Co-Chairman. 
Thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for bringing that to our attention. And that's a fascinating research. And it, it does get into then a little bit about this, this public available identifier concept and the fact that you're going to need to have something which is sufficient to link to that you can actually run that research on. And I, I think it's a, almost a good test case circumstance where if, if you can't find what you need to find to run your research, then it's probably an insufficient public identifier with regard to what we're looking for statutorily. So uh, I think we'll really look forward to hearing how things turn out for you on that. And, and um, I'll, I'll stop there, but we really appreciate your, your work on that, Daza.